Uh, this is joint work with uh, Alexander Boller from Jury Tech and Samuel Jaren and Christina Nita Rutaro from Purdue University. So let me just spend one slide to give you some motivational context for this problem that we're trying to solve in this paper. And it's all about minimizing latency. As we know, uh, with proliferation of mobile and web applications, uh, latency has certainly become a very huge deal on the internet of today. The internet is a very competitive environment. Uh, users are becoming more and more uh, content hungry and uh, certainly very impatient with latency. So some previous studies have shown, for example, that users might visit a website less often if it is slower <clears throat> just by a quarter of a second. And another study has shown that uh, Amazon can lose up to 1% in its sales just because of latency for um, as little as a tenth of a second. So uh, we know that bandwidth is cheap and will continue to grow, but there's a fundamental limitation in what we can do about latency. And it has to do with the fact that information cannot travel faster than the speed of light. So unless we can figure out how to, faster tra uh, how to travel faster than the speed of light, or build tunnels uh, in Earth, or maybe move to a smaller planet, pretty much uh, we are faced with the following challenge, which has to do with minimizing the number of RTTs, or round trip times, required to establish a connection, and hopefully without sacrificing security, of course. So this is exactly where Quick comes in. Uh, Quick is basically uh, Google's answer to the latency challenge. It stands for Quick UDP Internet Connections, so it runs on top of UDP, which is a transmission layer protocol. Uh, it was intended for web content delivery, and it was developed and deployed by Google in the Chrome br browser in 2013. And so it's mainly intended to produce security protection comparable to that of TLS, but reduce connection at the same time, reduce connection latency. And that is exactly the question that we try to target in the study. Can Quick actually do this in presence of attackers? So uh, let me spend a couple of slides uh, to give you just an idea of why this question is actually non-trivial. Uh, and what I will do is I'll uh, compare Quick and TLS. So let's first start with setup time. Uh, we all use TLS if, when we want to securely access our bank account online or maybe email, but TLS runs over TCP which means that in order to exchange data with TLS, we first have to go through a handshake associated with a TCP connection, and then another handshake associated with TLS key establishment. And so what Quick tries to do is, in some sense, combine these two handshakes into one so the connection establishment and key agreement can happen pretty much at the same time, sort of, and thereby cut the latency in half. And so uh, there are, of course, some benefits to using TCP, uh, such as it guarantees ordered delivery uh, and also provides some protection against connection spoofing. But it, as we see here, it adds to latency. And also we know that it suffers from subtle, subtle performance uh, degradation attacks such as TCP reset. And these kinds of attacks have been, um, recently have gained some notoriety as it was found out that they were used for um, censorship by some governments because they're kind of subtle. So the question is, well, what about Quick? How does Quick deal with these issues? And uh, let me now talk about uh, data exchange in Quick versus TLS. So in TLS, in order to exchange data, you have to first establish a session key. And then you can use that key to encrypt uh, the data that you're trying to exchange. But in Quick, things are slightly different. It actually looks like it has more stages, stages but in reality is that you can ex start exchanging data before you establish the final session key. And, you, and this data exchange happens with the initial key. And at the same time as you exchange data with the initial key, you can also establish the final session key. And the main benefit of this is that the parties can often avoid in practice uh, when they use QUIC uh, one RTT in the initial key establishment of QUIC by caching some of the protocol specific parameters. And that what this allows them to do in practice is to experience zero RTT connections. In other words, they don't actually have to wait for any RTTs before they start sending data in the initial data exchange phase where they use the initial key. But the question is, what, the, what implication does this optimization have on the security? Now, before I go on, I'd like to mention a very closely related work to our study from uh, last year uh, in CCS. The authors of this study have mainly focused on the key establishment phase of the QUIC protocol. And what they have done is developed a security definition for multi-stage key agreements. And they have shown that QUIC meets their definition. 
Uh, and what they've also shown is that if you modify the data exchange part of QUIC and sort of compose it together with the key establishment uh, phase of QUIC, then together you can sort of show that they're secure. However, the question is, what about security of the whole protocol as it actually is? In other words, how it is implemented without any modifications? And furthermore, what about its latency guarantees and presence of attackers? Uh, and the reason why this question is kind of important, because after all, QUIC is not uh, just some kind of hypothetical protocol uh, used to study in academia, but it's actually being deployed and used. And these are exactly the questions that we um, target in our study. What provable security guarantees does QUIC provide and under which assumptions? And furthermore, how effective is QUIC at minimizing latency in presence of attackers? The second question is a little bit more operational, and it has to do with not necessarily security, but how you can degrade performance of QUIC in some subtle ways that are hard to detect. So let me give you a very brief summary of our results. So we develop a security definition that is suitable for performance-driven protocols, kind of like QUIC, and we show that QUIC satisfies our security definition. Uh, this requires a very rigorous kind of approach. We show that QUIC does not satisfy the traditional notion of forward secrecy uh, provided by some TLS variants like, for example, TLS DHE. Uh, let me remind you that forward secrecy is the property that if the communicating parties are ever compromised and their state gets revealed, uh, if there's forward secrecy, then their communication that happened before the compromise cannot be leaked. And with respect to the second question, um, we show with a simple attacks on some of the parameters of the protocol is actually easy to prevent QUIC from achieving its minimal latency goals. And we have implemented all of these attacks, and we show that they're practical and effective at degrading QUIC's performance. So in the rest of this talk, I would like to talk about um, provable analysis that we've done uh, about QUIC. Uh, and after that, I will talk about our performance degradation attacks against QUIC, and then I will conclude with a summary and future work. So let me first give you a little bit more details about how QUIC works uh, and also point out some of its complexities. So imagine we have a client and a server. The client has not yet uh, connected to the server ever before. So it picks a, a connection ID, which is just a random string, sends a um, connection request to the server. The server then generates what's called a source address token, uh, which basically plays uh, is somewhat analogous to a SYN cookie in TCP and then sends it back along with uh, a parameter called server config, which contains the service public DFI Hellman values. And then if everything's okay and the signature on the server config verifies, the client produces its own DFI Hellman values, sends them back, uh, the server verifies the source address token, and then they can establish the initial key and exchange data before they actually get the final session key. Now during the initial data exchanges, when the server can now produce um, Diffie-Hellman values that are dedicated specifically for this session, uh, send them to the client uh, encrypted under the initial key, and then after that they can derive uh, the uh, new session final key and uh, ex exchange data under this final key. So this is a very busy slide, but the main point here is that uh, the SDK, the source address token, and the server config can actually be reused in what's called a connection resumption. This is exactly where the where quick gets interesting. Uh, okay. Wait, hold on a second. Okay, so in, in connection resumption, imagine that the client uh, already has contacted the server before. So all it has to do is pick a new connection ID, and it can reuse the source address token and the server config file um, parameter uh, as long as uh, they do they're not expired. And what it allows to do is to basically shave off a whole RTT from the connection. And if you think about it, what this means is actually the client can start exchanging data with the server with basically a zero RTT connection, but under the initial key. So the bottom line here is with use of cacheable parameters um, in QUIC, you can actually achieve zero RTT connections under the initial key. However, this introduces some potential complexities. Specifically, uh, because the client cannot initially check SDK authenticity from the server, if it ever gets corrupted uh, for any reason, malicious or non-malicious, uh, this can, can potentially lead, lead to inconsistent view of the handshake, which can be bad because it, it may mean that two parties have a different view of the conversation and potentially establish uh, distinct initial keys. Uh, and another issue is that compromising the server before the server config actually expires can reveal data encrypted under the initial key 
that was derived with the server config, which basically breaks the forward uh, secrecy. So um, generally, uh, provable security analysis requires a very rigorous approach with a security model and a proof, but so as not to uh, bore you, I would actually just would like to go through some of the challenges that we faced uh, in our security analysis and just to give you a very high level overview. So first of all, there was a lot of previous work uh, in TLS uh, in the crypto community, uh, but unfortunately this is not very suitable. It's very relevant, but it's not suitable. Uh, and this is again because data and quick can be exchanged in the initial, uh, uh, initial data phase where the initial key is used before the session key is actually established. Um, in quick, parties can potentially sometimes set distinct initial keys. And what this means is the uh, traditional notion of having a matching conversation is not suitable here because parties can potentially uh, set distinct keys uh, in the initial uh, key establishment stage. And so for that, we need a new notion of what it means to set a key with a party to capture data privacy when data is encrypted under different keys. The server config is publicly available and can be reused as long as it is not expired. And what this means is we need a weaker notion for forward secrecy, specifically tailored to initial keys. However, the traditional notion should still apply to forward uh, secrecy. Uh, traditional notion of forward secrecy should still apply for final session keys. And finally, as I mentioned before, Quick does not run on top of TCP, it runs on top of UDP, which does not address the anode delivery and spoofing. And so we need to capture attacks involving misorder uh, misordering and selectively delaying and dropping uh, packets, as well as potential connection spoofing in our definition. So s these are some of the things that we had to deal with, and to address these challenges, we had to come up with a new protocol model that is suitable for these kinds of protocols that we call quick communications. And uh, to, we also developed a security notion appropriate for these kinds of protocols that we call quick authenticated and confidential channel establishment. So let me very informally present you our main result with respect to security of QUIC. So we find that QUIC meets our notion of security as long as the underlying signature scheme that it uses is strongly unforgeable under the uh, chosen message attack. This is a standard security notion for digital signatures. And to that effect, QUIC uh, supports two very well-known signature schemes. Also, the underlying uh, authenticated encryption with associated data scheme, this is what QUIC uses to actually encrypt the data, uh, has to satisfy the following two uh, uh, pretty standard well-known security notions, the indistinguishability and authentication security. To that effect, Quick uses uh, what's called AES Galois counter mode, or GCM, which has been shown to be provably secure uh, in previous work. And we also use a couple of uh, pretty well-known standard assumptions in our analysis that I won't talk too much about here in the interest of time. So uh, let's now shift gears to the second uh, portion of a talk where I tell you about our performance attacks against uh, Quick. So let me start by giving a very general overview of uh, what types of attacks we're talking about here. The first type of attack is based on replaying public cacheable content, um, such as, for example, the server config and the source address token, STK. And this kind of attacks results in fooling client and or server parties in trying to achieve a connection and maintain some kind of state and thereby waste resources. The second type of attack is uh, based on manipulating un, um, unprotected packet fields, such as the connection ID and the SDK again. And this kind of attack leads clients and servers to have a distinct view of the key establishment phase and potentially lead to failure to establish a session key and therefore a connection failure, and again, a waste of time and lots of latency. So to summarize these attacks, uh, the, both of the types of the attacks cause servers and clients to waste time and resources, and they, of course, introduce a lot of latency. Uh, they ironically stem from the parameters whose purpose was actually to minimize latency in QUIC, such as the server config and the SDK. And most importantly, these attacks uh, do not concern data authenticity and confidentiality. Again, the point of these attacks is just to grade the performance of the protocol. This is a table that summarizes all of the attacks that we have implemented. Uh, we targeted the quick Chromium implementation from October of last year, and we've implemented all of our attacks in Python, with Python Scapy library. I will not have time to go into details of any of these attacks, but uh, the main point is that these attacks can be used to deny clients 
of any choice, right, uh, to have access to any application of any choice, uh, or cause them to waste time and resources, and potentially also lead a service uh, to waste resources and you know, maybe a, a denial of service attack. Uh, the reason why these attacks are interesting is um, unlike just plainly dropping or delaying packets, they're actually quite subtle. Uh, they're sort of part of the protocol. And they're very hard to detect. And we believe that this is something that governments or just organizations in general could potentially use for uh, purposes of censorship. So uh, now I'd like to uh, conclude the talk uh, with a summary. So uh, we have, in this study, developed a security definition for performance-driven protocols, such as QUIC. And we have shown that QUIC meets our definition, uh, with some caveats, of course, with respect to forward secrecy. Uh, we have implemented uh, five different practical performance degradation attacks against QUIC, and we have shown that they're very effective at degrading QUIC's performance. Uh, now, the main point of the study was not necessarily to say that QUIC is a good protocol or bad protocol, or whether it should be deployed or not. It is already deployed. But the point is just here to demonstrate the inherent trade-off between performance and security. In some sense, uh, what we're trying to say that there's no free lunch when it comes to the trade-off between latency and security. If you want to minimize latency, potentially you'll have to give up some security properties. And finally, uh, we believe that our security definitions uh, are general enough and could be used to analyze other protocols in the future, such as, for example, uh, TLS version 1.3. So thank you very much uh, uh, for your attention. Uh, please look for the full version that should be available on ePrint as well as um, off of the author's websites. For all the details with respect to definitions, proofs, the attacks we have implemented, uh, we also compare them against various kinds of attacks uh, against TLS, and also provide some very high-level mitigation strategies. And I'd be happy now to take any questions. Um, so uh, my name is Mike Petullo. I'm from the United States Military Academy. Um, I should disclose before I ask my question, the, the research I'm going to talk about here is, is uh, I was involved in. We presented at CCS 2013. So I just wondered if you had come across the protocol Minimalt, which in fact does not sacrifice perfect forward security in order to achieve the, uh, the minimal latency of, of QUIC. Uh, I myself have not. Uh, and in fact, there was a paper from a while ago, I believe Ron Canetti was part of it, that actually sort of... Uh, in some sense, hinted that there's going to be always this kind of trade-off between uh, latency in the setup and forward secrecy. Okay, so I, I think we show with minimal that the trade-off is less less than perhaps you propose. Um, and there's a there's a paper near. Uh, I'm sorry, could you speak a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I said I, I I think you'll find if you read the minimal paper. Now, of course, we don't have the backing of Google, so the, the deployment is not what Quick is. And you, and you mentioned that in, in your talk, of course. So, you know, minimal has that disadvantage as of today, but. Uh, I think in our work we showed that the trade-off is perhaps less than, than, you, uh, than you state. So I'd encourage you and others to perhaps to look at that minimal paper. OK, yes, thank you. I will definitely thank check you. it out. Um, just a, a historic note. Um, I, I might be wrong on the details here, but I believe that uh, the method that QUIC uses was developed by Whit Diffie in 1980. Oh, well, I mean. That's, I think, before I was born, but great. I'll check out that work. I guess, I guess the point is, is, you know, I'm not trying to sell QUIC as a protocol. Uh, the point is it was actually implemented, and the, the important part of this work was to actually study something that was implemented. All right. 